All right, getting a little nervous. All right, I have everything prepared. My heart is pounding. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Zabio Arts tutorial. I haven't done a tutorial on the human face since before the pandemic and you pushed my last one past a million views and I'm always happy when I see art videos getting views, especially tutorials and especially, especially when it's my tutorials because I'm awesome and I like seeing myself succeed. Oh, that felt weird. Is that, uh, is that something that a confident person would say? I've been working on my self-esteem lately. Anyway, uh, I hope this tutorial is as helpful as my last one. Here we go. Let's start with the first step. I do two little potato shapes, and then this one is kind of at an angle. A lot of these are, I'm gonna be saying them as if they're rules. They're not rules because you can take any one of these little tips or whatever and completely change it or do it the opposite way and it'll just make the face into a different shape. So some people have that line going straight up and down, but generally speaking, typically you will see the front of the face right here protruding out further than the forehead, but not everyone. And it kind of fits into like a box shape. A lot of times I see with beginner drawings especially, people shortening the back of the head, like it's not as important. It's very important, okay? Don't underestimate how freakishly long the back of the head is. It looks like an alien. As far as proportions go, it's about like a one to two ratio. Horizontal part goes down to about halfway of that boxy shape. The vertical potato shape goes to about the halfway point uh, going the other way. All right, now this is the tricky part and I'm so sorry that we're starting out with the most complicated part in the beginning. I promise you the rest of the tutorial is gonna get easier, but I don't have any math for the nose, the mouth, and the chin where they go, okay? Because the proportions of those, where they go, whether the mouth is up higher or lower or whatever, it doesn't fall on like a one-third line, one-quarter line, whatever. Every person is different, which is why it's so hard to get your drawing to look like a specific person because moving the proportions around just a tiny bit, which would be like a few millimeters in each direction, makes it look like a completely different person. It's really hard and it takes practice. But this is kind of my thought process for this. So basically I take that potato shape and I come down and kind of trace around this point and then stick it out for the nose. It's kind of about halfway between this part and this part, maybe a little bit higher, but uh, like I said, it's just going to change depending on how you want your character to look. And you'll have to experiment with it if it's one of your first times trying. With the lips, on a resting position, usually the part of the mouth is not straight across, okay? It actually goes down when you're looking at it from the side, okay? So if your face is straight on, that looks like a frown, but when your face is sideways and you have it going down, pointing down, it's actually just normal expression. This is also an area where you can make it look like different people. Some people, their top lip sticks out a little bit further. Some people, their bottom lip sticks out a little bit further. Sometimes the lips are different sizes, so you could have not just big lips and small lips, but they can be uneven. Some people have a bigger bottom lip or a bigger top lip, and uh, that can change. Moving on to the chin. This is also another area that I don't have a set rule for it. You're just gonna have to try it out. Sometimes the chin will actually stick out further than the lips. Sometimes it'll go in like, a, right? Person will look normal when they're looking at you and then when they turn to the side, it's like they're sucking in their chin, right? Somebody cut it off with a bucket knife. I don't know what a bucket knife is. The one thing that everybody does have is that the line of the chin will come up and attach itself more or less to that potato -y shape down here, okay? So you have the forehead attaching to that shape, the top of that potato, and then you have the chin or the jawline attaching to the bottom potato 
Moving on to the nostril, let me zoom in. We have this shape, you go bop, right on the end of that, and then come up for the nostril, okay? This is also an area where some people have their nostril like way up here, some people you can barely see it, and it all depends. The eyes are a lot different when you look at them from the side. They're basically like a triangle shape, and it lines up with this line right here. I like to think about it as like it kind of echoes this triangly angle right here. And this is another area where it can be closer to the bridge of the nose, it can be further back. Some people have their eyes like really sunken in deep into their skulls like I do, and some people have their eyes like way out in front. I'm really bad at the eyebrows, honestly. I just kind of put it in there, hope that it works. Oh, and one more thing about the eyes. Put this little line right here. Can you see this? That's going to be the line of the cheek where it folds over and meets the nose. That's a very important one. It'll make your drawings look like you know what you're doing. You don't have to know what you're doing. It's just a line. This part right here is really subtle, but it's also one of those things that makes you look like you know what you're doing, like you know facial anatomy, even if you don't. It's just little vertical lines touching the edge of the nostril and touching the corner of the mouth. And what that's gonna do is, it's going to create this sort of indication of the cheek, but not all the way across. It's only gonna show on those points where the folds of like the nose is coming out here, the cheek is coming out here, and they're meeting together in the butt crack of love. And here we got a little love triangle going on. We got the bottom lip, top lip, and then the cheek all coming together in the love triangle butt crack of love. I don't really know where the ear is placed. I place it right in this little nookie right here. Ooh, wait, that's a bad word. Place it in this little nook right here, and it seems to work out just fine. See, the bottom of the earlobe, you know, fit to where the jaw goes on this potato part, and then the top of the ear meets where this cross section is, all right? I'm gonna do a simplified version of the ear folds which is basically like the number five coming across there. There are so many different ways to do ears, so reference the ones that you like. We're gonna bring this skull down to, I don't know, maybe the bottom of the ear, I guess. I didn't really think about where it would go. I just kind of went with feeling. And then here we go. This is where we're gonna start transitioning into the neck. Some people draw the necks like this. You gotta have like a little, little flappy bird down here. The neck is going to get a little bit thicker towards the bottom. Those lines aren't quite parallel. Eventually, they will kind of meet at a point if that were to continue. <laughs> if they have an Adam's apple, it's going to stick out further. But even if you don't have an Adam's apple, there's still going to be a little bump for your uh, esophagus cartilage right there. Take your hand, squeeze this part, then you know what I'm talking about. And then the angle for the collar of the shirt is definitely way at a slant. This is also another area that I see people really messing up on. That's because the back of the shirt is taller than the front of the shirt. So don't forget that. A lot of people do. I'm not really gonna go through the shirt. How do I explain the hairline? Um, this part right here can maybe point towards the eyebrow and the eyes. Hairline is also one of those things some people have a hairline that goes back further and a rounder forehead so it looks like you know maybe a receding hairline almost and then some people have like flat foreheads with a hairline that's really low and it looks kind of freaky that way there's no set rules you just have to play with it all right shadows i this is the way i like to think about shadows okay take a shape we'll do two shapes we'll do a sphere right here and we'll do this shape in this scenario the shadows are going to be on like a top-down light, okay? So basically, if, if this whole thing was a sphere, you would take the bottom of this, the bottom half basically, and shade it. On this part, it would also be like this, any 3D shape. And so this one right here is basically like the nose, right? You just shade the bottom part right here. Let me get a red thing. Let's see if we can finish this tutorial fast so I'm not wasting your time. Right here, where the eyebrows go over the eyes, uh, that's also dependent on how far the eyebrows stick out. Underneath the nose right here, the top lip, because when your lips are sideways, they actually look like this. 
this part is going down, so it's in shadow. This part is facing up, so the light is catching it. But then when it goes down to the chin, it has another piece of shadow right there, which is this part. You got a little baby one underneath the jawline. I mean, what did I say jawline? Cheekbones, if they have pronounced cheekbones. Maybe one right here, if they have like some uh, dungleberries on their head. You got a little bit inside the ear. This part right here is basically the exact same as this. Okay, so if this whole head is a sphere, this part is going to be shaded because it's round and going down, whatever. Same thing with this side. It's gonna kind of be like a triangle-y shape that's underneath all that. This part that I did on the shirt, which is not not really have to do any with the face is basically these two shapes but then I added some lines to it okay so it looks like a complicated shape but it's basically two triangles and that's how I like to think about the shading for like a simple top-down view don't have to stick to it specifically but I know shading can be one of those really hard things <laughs> that's the best Sun I've ever drawn Wow if you have a light source and you imagine what that light source is doing to each 3D shape, you can try to apply that logic to the face, which is made up of 3D basic shapes as well. <laughs> For two minutes, what I miss? You missed the whole tutorial. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks to all my lovely patrons and Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for tutorials like this, I do private Patreon streams twice a month and we do voice chats, critiques, reviews of your artwork. We draw together sometimes on the same canvas, so like drawing on multiplayer mode, and we play video games and stuff like that. And don't even get me started on Skillshare, you crunchy tater tot. Skillshare offers thousands of educational classes for creative and curious people on topics like illustration, design, music production, photography, video freelancing, and more with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. I watched a class by Vashti Harrison called Illustrating in Procreate, Drawing a Shareable Time Lapse. It takes you through the whole process of creating a beautiful illustration start to finish. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule, there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. You can squeeze a lot out of that free trial, you can cancel anytime, and if you decide to keep learning with Skillshare, it's less than 10 bucks a month with an annual subscription. Link in the description to try it out yourself, it's worth a try. So my very last piece of advice would be to play around with all the different ways that you can change those things. You can follow exactly what I did if it's like one of your first times trying this out, but then please do me a favor and experiment with it because you'll find some really cool things that you wouldn't have thought about otherwise. Like, you know, you can make each one of the features more round. You can make the nose stick out further then the mouth right here and then the chin go back so he kind of has like Phineas over here well <laughs> I forgot to record an outro so here I am after editing the video I got nothing and now I'm just recording this part to say goodbye I hope you have a wonderful day peace and love my friends take care of each other bye bye